Folks, today we're going to cook two racks of plate end beef ribs. And I never can remember, I always get part way into the video, and I can never remember how much it weighed, what it cost, when I got it. Here's the data 10.75 pounds for two racks, $15.99 a pound. He gives me a buck or a buck and a half off a pound when I process it myself. This didn't cost exactly $171.89, but. Just to give you an idea with meat prices these days, yeah, 100, and that's not even these days. This was from September. These are plate ribs. These are the dino ribs, the big three bones where the meat starts out in a square and ends up in a triangle. I'm super excited about this because I've never done these. I've always wanted to, and they're very difficult to find. Um, this is a Creekstone Farms uh, USDA Choice. And I'm actually kind of happy that it is the choice, and I'll tell you why. For a long time, all the meats that he had been selling uh, that for barbecue were uh, prime. So he he would sell prime brisket, prime chuck, uh, prime chuck ribs. You know the chuck end of the short ribs, and it's all delicious. But ribs being so fatty to begin with, when you get them prime, th honestly they're a little gross. Okay, folks, here's where we're at. I've got one that I've trimmed and I've got one that I haven't. So I just wanted to show you, this is what I meant by where there's not uh, too much fat cap. Normally this whole thing would be a sheet, three quarters of an inch deep of fat, especially if it was a prime one. And this one, they cut a great deal of the fat off, but they left the silver skin and it's, it's, it's a rough trim. Alrighty, so this is what uh, the bigger of the two looks like. So it doesn't have this big missing chunk of fat on the bottom. And again, I think it has to do with which end of the cow that it comes from. So these are probably connected at some point or maybe they come from different cows. I don't know. So I got as much of the silver skin off as I could. You can see there's kind of a texture to the meat, which I'm not entirely sad about, be, be honest with you, because I believe that'll help make a good... Um, a good crust so anyway obviously the good big ribs are going to come out of this piece of meat and um, I'm gonna get it salted up get it dry brining get it wrapped and uh, ready for transportation here's what we got so far folks um, this one has a ton of salt a lot of cracked black pepper and this uh, darker Aleppo pepper called Iso Bieber and I think it's the same, well, it says special Urfa pepper. So I guess it's not the same as pool beaver. Crushed red hot pepper. I guess it's actually a different kind of pepper. So what I was thinking was that this, this one is the um, Aleppo pepper, just uh, like they roasted it dark. And then this one has salt, uh, a lot of crushed black pepper, cracked black pepper, garlic, uh, granulated garlic, and the Aleppo pepper or the pool beaver. This is the experimental one because it's smaller, but it's also the one that's more marbled and more typical. So either way, it should come out good. And here's the secret sauce. I've got Marmite, no, Vegemite. I've got Vegemite and uh, Worcestershire sauce and a little espresso powder. So all these are, are flavors that are supposed to enhance beef beefiness. So I'm going to just drizzle this all over and I don't know if I can do good camera work and do good food work. So I see it's kind of syrupy and I'm, I may put garlic on here too, but I wanted to see it without because the garlic kind of covers everything else up. So I'm going to drizzle this on, garlic it, wrap this pan and we're going to call this good until we get it to the smoker so this is all pretty the this the uh, vegemite when it comes out of the container is kind of looks it's thick like fudge or or uh what's that hazelnut spread italian stuff there anyways it's thick like that and you have to put it with some kind of liquid in order to get it to be pourable. Otherwise, it, it, you'd spread and it would pull up all the, the stuff you have on the meat 
And so I made it into a syrup using the uh, instant espresso powder and the Worcestershire sauce. So this is going to be dark, 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 dark flavors, beefy flavors. And this one is going to have the traditional salt, pepper, garlic powder, and hot pepper on it. And then we're going to see, you know, what they taste like. So I salted the, the sides, the ends, and the top of both pieces of meat. And all the rest of the stuff is just on the top because that's how I roll. Okay, folks, I'm getting a late start today and I totally lost my voice. So it's 12.08 p.m. I sprayed the outside of my smoker down with uh, canola oil spray to get it a little seasoned because I noticed it was starting to rust. <clears throat> I didn't. I did the uh, outside only because I didn't want that smell of uh, cooking off oil to get on the meat. I guess it's nothing horrible because it is just plain canola oil. But So that's what it looks like. The temperature's coming up. Got the water pan full. So I need to heat that water in order for the table the temperature to stabilize. Right now we're at 288. Let's take a look at the fire. My starter coals have burned down. I got a couple of logs on there, but I got to knock them, make some coals, get another log on it. We got to get this thing stabilized, and then I'm going to put the meat on. So the meat probably won't go on for another few minutes. So the smoke is nice and clean, even though my temperatures haven't settled out. Again, can't say enough good stuff about maple. I've only had one, I, I threw one oak log in there initially on the startup, just because I know that those tend to make some pretty long lasting coals uh, and my wood had gotten wet in the process of moving it was in the bed of a pickup and it rained and it all kind of soaked up off the bed liner it has one of those drop-in bed liners so the ends of some of these logs are wet even though the wood is seasoned and it hasn't really been that dry and it definitely hasn't been warm so some of these are wet, which is why I'm drying them up on top here. And I'm going to go through and cherry pick some logs for later. And I may mix in a little oak with it, but it's going to be primarily maple. I'm, I'm going to use my maple now that I got it here. <clears throat> so I, I wanted you guys to see the meat in daylight. And unfortunately for me, there's a, there's a tree that's casting a shadow but it's still natural light, so it looks a little bit better. And I wanted to show you, see how nicely marbled that meat is? This is, this is um, choice meat, this is not prime meat. So um, just that, whatever that muscle is over the ribs in a cow is naturally very well marbled. And that's the whole point of short ribs or plate ribs, that, which these are. So these have a, a good amount of muscle on them but the muscle is very well marbled so i'm feeling like choice was definitely the way to go we'll we'll know for sure later on but i'm thinking that this is going to be pretty good <clears throat> this is uh just a general view right now it's kind of a mess i still have to put up my little shed um logs are burning fairly clean i have it choked pretty far down and some of that smoke is from oil and the meat on the inside so I would call that pretty clean uh, the outside looks a little shinier because I sprayed it down so that's good keep the rust away right now I'm running about 220 so I want to keep in that 220 225 area uh, I meat started at 38 degrees and now it's 53 degrees so it's going to be a while, but now I can kind of relax a little bit. I forgot to set my timer, and I don't know what time it is right now, but I think I started a little after noon. Somewhere along the line, I was working on my, uh, my temperatures here, and I decided to move the ribs up to the top shelf. So on the right, we have the rib that has the, uh, the Vegemite, and then this is the other, the big one. You can see the meat is tensing up. This one's probably pretty close to being done, so I'm gonna have to temp probe that. Um, move it from the big one to the little one. The little one's definitely cooking faster. The big one shows like 174, 175. And I put in some cheese sausages because I'm getting hungry. 
and we've been building the, the shed. So I'm trying to get my temps pretty consistent here. Gave them a little spray so they're nice and glossy with the vinegar and water. And uh, I may just put another another probe in to leave the one in the big one. Okay, so here's the current situation. I ran a little low on coal, so my temp went down. Plus, I had the door open to fiddle around with the temp probes. But um, the top is my temperature, cook chamber temperature. So that's uh, coming back up pretty rapidly. It was up around 240, 250 most of the time. The second one is the big piece of meat. And what happened was I had the probe originally... I think I was touching the bone. So a lot of times what happens is, you know, the meat is thinner before you start to cook and then the meat squinches up and gets like thicker off the bone, but shorter from end to end. And um, I think that probe was touching the bone and the bone conducts temperature better. So when I took it out, I put it into what's the middle of the meat between the bone and the top side. And it gives me a temp of 167.2. And the other one I just stuffed into the middle of the meat and that gives me 161.5. So the big one and the little one are only like six degrees apart. And um, so I have a little longer to go than I thought, but that's the situation. Okay, folks, so I've got some smoke coming into the picture here, but hopefully you can see this is the big piece of meat. And this is the little one that had the... Uh, there's too much steam coming up. So there was the little one that had the... Uh, I'm going to get the lens clear here. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to zoom in. So this is the little one that has the Vegemite concoction on it. And this is the big one that has just salt, pepper, garlic, and the uh, pool beaver or the pepper. So they got some pretty good pullback on the bones on both of them. So this is the Vegemite one that I'm wrapping and I'm gonna put back in. It's about 170 degrees or so. And we're gonna get it up to like 205, nice and tender. So this is the uh, the bigger of the two pieces. This is the plain old salt, pepper, hot pepper and garlic powder one. Got some pretty good pullback, got a nice crust on it. Still a little wet, but I just sprayed it not too long ago, so I'm not really too worried about that. I'm gonna spray it down one more time with the vinegar and water and then wrap it up and throw it back in. I think it was at 172. I'm gonna to try to find a spot where the probe says the same. Got a little man area going out here. Jay brought out the burn barrel. And in the background, you can see my shed. And I have a, a shed to keep my stuff in. And I gotta figure out what to do with that wood pile. And then I got my maple pile got everything cooking with the ribs are all wrapped up and probed up and they're at 170 175 so we're gonna I may uh, bump the temperature up a little stuff some wood in there get it hot try to finish them off but they got another 30 35 degrees left to go Okay, folks so here we have the one that had the uh what the heck is that stuff come from a land down under vegemite vegemite so this is the one that had the vegemite see a nice uh smoke ring on it nice moist tender oh this meat is so tender yeah that's what i'm talking about so we're gonna sit down and eat so i didn't realize this but um jason's this is saturday and jason's birthday is monday so this is his birthday dinner we still have another one that we got resting uh, the bigger piece of meat took quite a bit longer to cook. So this one is what we're going to eat right now, and then we'll eat a little bit later. Okay, so it's day two, and this is the big rack of ribs. And I'm at a different brother's house, so instead of at Jay's, I'm at Chuck's, Chuck and Jackie's. And we're going to slice into this uh, this big old hunk of, hunk of beef. This is the one that was salt, pepper, garlic powder, and the Aleppo pepper. So I'm going to hand the camera to Chuck while I slice these bad boys. Go 
Oh yes, yeah, pretty tender. So these ones actually, I never took them out of the wrapper yesterday. We ate the other rack of ribs and we were full. So I left them in the paper in the cooking pan and I covered them with tin foil. And then I, um, I uh, brought them home in the cooler. So today I warmed them up in the oven and I had a lot of stuff going on. I did laundry and everything and I think I left them a little too long, but at least they're tender and they're definitely warm. So, oh yeah, they're nice and, look at them fall off the bone. <laughs> so this is the underneath part there. That's just the membrane, but the uh, meat on top is what we're looking at. Look at that nice smoke ring and nice moist. Look at the juice. That fat is nice and rendered. Mmm. So, yep, we're going to eat these. And both racks seem to taste, uh, come out good. That one with the uh, Vegemite on it was absolutely delicious. So I'm definitely doing that again. This mode, I'm going to see how good they are. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Look at that dinner. Mm-mm-mm. So I had a little taste of it and they're delicious. So we're gonna sit down to our meal. We got some mac and cheese and peas and our ribs and we're gonna sit down and enjoy it. You guys have a great time. God bless, be good to each other and smokers chugging baby.